90% of y'all told us to drop every single one of them. You called us a friendship org. You said that we were keeping the wrong people around. When you believe in people, you got to trust them, give them time. And that's exactly what they did. The reigning world champions in the Call of Duty League are the LA Thieves. But it wasn't always smooth sailing for Nadeshot's franchise. In year one, they failed to secure a single top four placement, making a staggering number of roster changes almost every other week, with some of the most questionable moves we've ever seen in the CDL. So how do they turn it around? This is the story of the Los Angeles Thieves. We will not be a part of the CDL. We will not have a team competing for our brand. Psych! On the 6th of November 2020, 100 Thieves officially acquired a CDL spot from Optic Gaming Los Angeles, as the Optic branding was transferred back to Hex's then Chicago spot. Nadeshot was finally back in Call of Duty Esports since 100T's hiatus following CDL franchising, and the community was ecstatic. They carried over three players from OGLA, selecting Slasher, TJ Halley, Kenny, and rounding out with Temp. As the 2021 season kicked off, LA Thieves came out the gates hot. They won four of their opening five games, putting them in a great spot heading into Major 1. But they collapsed when it mattered most, placing top six after being embarrassed by their local rivals LA Gorillas and getting bopped out by Optic Chicago. The misery continued over to stage two, and the LA Thieves decided a player change was needed. Temp was moved to the bench and replaced by Challengers player Venom, which was a big risk considering the teenager had zero pro experience. Venom did show some promise, but it didn't seem to fix anything in the short term. They lost all their remaining games and suffered a demoralizing defeat at the hands of Atlanta FaZe, one remembered well by the community today for the sheer disrespect FaZe showed their opponents. The team clearly needed more time to build chemistry with Venom, but little did we know at the time, this would not be the only roster change in Stage 2. Just days before the second major of the season, Slasher was shockingly benched for substitute Draza. With minimal practice, the team finished top six yet again. Slasher himself was deeply frustrated with this decision, feeling he was not the problem with the roster. Coach Jacob, who was undoubtedly a key piece behind this decision, even revealed that their friendship had come to a standstill and they were no longer on speaking terms, despite winning the world championship together back in 2016. If we're the worst team in the league, we gotta try something different. I mean, I know how much it hurts. So like, especially having to go through that with Austin was tough. I don't, I haven't talked to him since, if I'm being honest. I don't, don't think he likes me very much right now, but. The roster was in shambles. Star player Kenny even revealed he offered to bench himself or get traded because the team simply wasn't working and something had to give. Us together was just not good. You know, it, we have so much talent and it's just not clicking. The suffering seemed endless for LA Thieves, but in Sage 3, they seemed like they were finally turning a new leaf. Winning three of their opening four games, things were looking up. We've been going, doing good in practice, doing good in matches. Overall, the vibe on the team is just great. So, I mean, I have no complaints. But despite these results, the decision makers' eyes lit up when they saw superstar Slayer Hook was controversially benched by the Dallas Empire. Who could help Empire win the World Championship the previous year, and this seemed like a no-brainer for Nadeshots. Sign Hook, get better, no matter how much the fee was. Hex even revealed he considered this move as well. Hook arrived, TJ Halley was benched, right when they were on a decent stretch, and the Hook move set them back yet again, finishing top six yet another time. Seeking to recapture the spark, and with just four games played under the organization, Hook was then benched. This was a mind-blowing move after they paid one of the biggest fees in CDL history for him and the community were getting bored of their antics. LA Thieves management didn't seem to care, but their hopes of coming anywhere close to winning a championship did as they continued to flounder. A few matches later, they brought back Hook to the starting lineup as well as Slasher as the CDL returned to LAN after the pandemic and Nadeshot valued the experience these players would bring. When it rains though, it pours. Just 24 hours before their first match, Hook was barred from playing the tournament after failing to properly validate a COVID test. It turned out he'd misspelled his name on the form and failed to turn up in time to correct the error. 
Dwarza had to come back in, and to add to the misery, they lost their losers match in Game 5 to place dead last at the Major. As the final stage of the season awaited, LA Thieves did LA Thieves things, making yet another roster change. This time, they dropped TJ Halley and picked up former world champion John, who'd won it in 2016 with Slasher and Jcap, who hadn't played at the top level though for nearly two years. Unsurprisingly, they were top six again. A frustrating season for LA Thieves to say the very least, but they'd still managed to qualify for the world championship and had the potential to salvage their season. In losers round one, they pushed Minnesota Rocker all the way to a game five. Lose this map and your season is over. 25 seconds and the Rocker players just trying to distance themselves back, attach nose. As long as I stay alive, that should decide how this game goes. John for the first, but he knows, he doesn't see where Major is. He doesn't see where Major is. He was toward the bottom side of the car. Has to go for the defuse. Major, can he take him down? And he will. Minnesota, stay alive! LA Thieves couldn't get over the last hurdle. Ironically, their new pickup John arguably cost them the victory, a fitting way to end their season. Eight different players, hundreds of thousands spent, zero top four finishes. Slasher was not a happy man, blaming Jcap and those who had decided the roster changes for ruining their chance to improve. A rocky start to Najot's project, to say the very least. Going into Call of Duty Vanguard, Slasher was the first player out the door, with now 100T Hall of Famer and member of the Black Ops 4 roster Octane reuniting with Kenny after two winless years on Seattle Surge. Completing the roster was Envoy, who was recently dropped from Optic following the Envy merger. If you had to give me confidence levels going into this season, like say we had five majors, you think we're winning two of them? Yeah. yeah. You truly believe that? I truly believe that. These were four players with a point to prove, but the LA Thieves started the season in traditional fashion. They showed promise by beating Optic at the kickoff classic, putting up a strong performance in the qualifiers, 4-1, but capped it off with a top six finish at the major. Stage two was a disaster. They went 0-5 in, in qualifying matches before finishing top eight at major two. They gotta do something. And a roll swap, I don't think is gonna fix it, man. And I know like they're pretty adamant about keeping the same team, but them getting outplayed by three, outplayed by three million, and barely, you know, clutching up maps isn't gonna fly in this league. Ken and Sam, one of them gotta go. They can't be on the same team. With just one win in their last eight games, betting your house on a roster move would have been the smart thing to do. But in a shocking decision to the community, LA Thieves decided to ride out the storm with the same team and give the roster time to solve its problems. Octane did seem the likeliest to be dropped at the time for his poor performances, but the team trusted him and the roster to turn it around. But I wholeheartedly thought I was going to get dropped after Major 1, uh, or not Major 1, Major 2. Um, I was playing really poorly. After huge pressure from the community for years to move Kenny back to the more impactful SMG role where he dominated in his rookie season, LA Thieves made the role change many had been waiting years for. Um, we're going to try it with Zach moving to the flex roll and me actually moving to the submachine gun roll. So I'll be back as an SMG. I know people hate it. People, Some people love it, some people hate it. Some people say I can't run an SMG, but I know full and well that I'm very able to run an SMG at the highest levels. This decision paid off as they picked up a second place finish at the Pro-Am event, their best ever placing in franchise history. They kept the ball rolling by strengthening their coaching department, picking up Shane, former assistant of the London Royal Ravens. Another grand final was their target at Major 3 in Toronto, but the team only made top four. But Jesus Christ, this series was did Atlanta phase? They shit on that bro, shit. Bro, they Slow and steady improvements, but not where they wanted to be. After a whole year of unnecessary roster changes, many believed that LA Thieves were now being too patient and there was no chance of this team ever winning a major. But LA Thieves refused to blow it up and stuck to their guns. Their opponent in the first round of Major 4 was Atlanta Phase, the team that beat LA Thieves four times already that season. And their last meeting was not too pretty for one man especially. He's going back and forth. And Selyam eventually comes out on top, but oh! Rodman with the two, and the Thieves, they win the series. Unbelievable! L.A.T. come out again! 
revenge is sweet just weeks ago. Humiliated. But the thieves finally did it. They took down FaZe for the first time in their history. They didn't do it just once at this event though, but twice as they defeated them en route to the grand finals. Standing in their way was Crim6's subliners, who would take him down at the winners' finals and at the Prime Classic. But this time, it was revenge. This hard point's not done yet! And still no. diving for the moment, but is it enough? You get inside, but they hold on. Two more seconds. That is all LA needs. One more hit. One more hit. Crim tries to hold it on going through the front now, going for the contest immediately. Guns up. Kismet's there, drives it through the side door, off takes with the kills, oh my god, it's in! LA Thieves had done it, their first ever championship in the CDL era, getting it done far earlier than many franchises who were around since year one. While in the past they would try and fix everything with a roster change, this time they stayed patient, made some roll tweaks, and delivered a championship. It felt like I, I had to win. Like there was no other choice. Like I had to not only prove to all the morons out there telling me I'm horrible, but like to <laughs> myself that like I should still be playing, I shouldn't retire, like I need to continue to play. But the job was not yet done, with the world championship itself just around the corner. LA Thieves were in pole position, but FaZe had made the grand final in three of the four majors and certainly could not be taken lightly. And Envoy's waiting. Envoy is just waiting for him! Knows where the bomb is planted for. Pete draws it. If you reach out this, son, oh my good God. Time's ticking. He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. Playing with this food. They get on the point, they stop the clock for a moment, but immediately they're oh, met by Envoy, oh, 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 as Dylan Adam has picked up three in a row, looking to take care of the entire squad, and he's done it. That's an incredible opener. Envoy versus FaZe, who wins? Turns out it's the Prince. Already Atlanta FaZe stuck in your spawn. You can't afford to have a bad opening break, and well, oh, here they are Whoa! getting picked apart. No way. One by once again, they're gonna run around one another looking for this, and I think Sim, he is picking up pace. He's hitting speed, 1v1! Envoy does it again! That's the defuse. Gotta win the gunfights. So 4v4, here comes the fight, sells the first man in. Trains on behind, Octane wins it. One more man on the flank, trying to keep the play going. Shots are there. There is gunfire, rattling out all across Tusk on Envoy. He's in, he wins it! There's only one man left, and it's done! It's over! Daylight robbery! There are no witnesses, no survivors! The LA Thieves have done it! They have run it up! They are LA Thieves were champions of the world. Nadeshot had finally got in his ring, but as an owner rather than a player. Taking down Scump and Optic on the road to glory was somewhat poetic after leaving the organization in 2015 after a failed attempt at champs that year. Fast forward to the current season, and the team recently made their fourth grand final in their history, and looking to be the first ever world champions to break the champs curse and win back-to-back -back world championships. From one of the most embarrassing seasons in Call of Duty memory, to back-to-back -back championships in a game nobody thought consistency was possible. Will we ever see a story like LA Thieves again, or will rivals learn from their mistakes and triumphs? Hit the like button if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more content just like this.